So the biggest number that I have ever heard is our national debt dollar amount, which is thirty-one trillion four hundred and fifty-seven billion four hundred and eighty-six million six hundred and fifty-six thousand six hundred and sixty-three dollars. So today I'm actually going to be talking about taxes because it seems like the most obvious way to get out of debt is to raise our taxes. So in this video, we are gonna be looking at how much money the government has already generated in revenue from taxes in 2023. So just in a few months, and it's a bigger number than I was expecting. And then we're gonna look at the breakdown uh, or the summary of the federal income tax from, we're gonna use the, the numbers from 2020. Next, we're gonna be looking at the tax brackets from 2022 and seeing how they change from last year to this year. And we'll look at it whether you're filing individually or married filing jointly. And then we're gonna look at how much the top 1% in just three states are paying of the overall tax in the United States. Pay your fair share. And finally, stick around until the very end, which it, you know it's a part that I think is the most interesting, and it's the tax burden by state. So basically, it breaks down what state is the worst to live in if you really hate paying taxes, and which state is the best to live in if you really hate paying taxes. And I was actually shocked because California wasn't even in the top 10 and I, I expected it to be number one. So if these topics seem interesting to you, be sure to watch the entire video. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe as well. Also, if you find this video helpful, go ahead and hit that like button. I really appreciate it. And it's the best way to tell the almighty algorithm that uh, there's something interesting here. So let's jump back into it. So looking at the national debt here, the, the national debt is the total amount of outstanding borrowing by the US federal government accumulated over the nation's history. So over the entire journey of this um, US experiment, we have accumulated $31.5 trillion in debt, which is, which is crazy. So then because of that, we have taxes for a variety of reasons, we have taxes, but one of them is to chip away at the national debt. So I got curious and was wondering, well, how much are we chipping away at that? Because not, that's, that's just the debt. That doesn't even include the amount that we're going to be spending this year. So any revenue that comes into the government from taxes is then used to pay off all of our government bills for this year. And then if there's anything left over, I'm assuming it goes to paying off the national debt which we won't even get into that in detail because the national debt is also earning interest every single day. So imagine an interest payment on trillions of dollars. Yeah, that, that's pretty bad. So I was surprised by this, but in 2023, the US government has already collected in revenue two trillion forty-eight billion one hundred and ninety-five million eight hundred and fifty-two thousand three hundred and seventy-two dollars Which these numbers are so big, it's hard to, I find it hard to even comprehend what that means. Like, wh where is this money going? And just if you didn't notice, two trillion is only a drop in the bucket against 31 trillion that we already have accrued in debt. So where is this two trillion dollars coming from? As it says here, the primary sources of revenue for the US government are individual and corporate taxes and taxes that are dedicated to funding Social Security and Medicare. So some of the revenue actually comes from customs, duties, leases of government-owned lands and buildings. So, so it's not just all taxes, but it does say the primary source of revenue for the U.S. government are individual and corporate taxes. So we're going to be looking into that specifically. So looking at this Tax Foundation website, again, these are numbers from 2020 but I found them super interesting. What we're looking at here on the left column is number of returns, average tax rate, average income taxes paid, adjusted gross income, share of total adjusted gross income, income taxes paid in millions, share of total income taxes paid, income split point, and then at the top, we're looking at the top 1%, top 5%, top 10%, 25%, 50%, the bottom 50%, 
and all taxpayers. So this is going to give us a pretty good look at who is paying the taxes and where the, the primary source of this trillion, multi-trillion dollar revenue is coming from. So on this first line, we're seeing the number of total returns. So we see that the top 1% includes one and a half million people or one and a half million tax returns. And the bottom 50% is 78, almost 79 million total tax returns, making the total taxpayers, or all of the tax returns that came in in 2020, 157 and a half million. The average tax rate amongst all of these people is 13.6%, which honestly, it seems pretty low. You're gonna see that the bottom 50% are only paying about 3% on their taxes, where the top 1% has an average tax rate of 26%. So this is where it gets pretty interesting. You notice that the average income taxes paid is almost a half million dollars here for the top 1% and only 500 bucks for the bottom 50%. So how does this break down in 2022 and what is going to change in 2023? So let's look at the tax rate from 2022 for single filers. Here you'll notice that the tax rate ranges anywhere from 10% all the way to 37%. So 37% of your income could be taxed if you make over $539,901 or more. And it's not all taxed at 37%. The first $10,000 is only taxed at 10%. The next is taxed at 12%. And then the next level, again, 22% and so on. So if you make $100,000, you're actually not going to be taxed 24% across the board. You'll only be taxed 24% on the money that you earn over $89,000 and $75. So as you can see, this is like the most basic principle of tax, and, and even that's confusing. So the taxes are the worst. So if we go look at 2022 tax table married filing jointly, again, it ranges from a 10% tax rate all the way to a 37% tax rate. But what you'll notice is this minimum is higher. So you can make more money if you're married filing jointly and stay in the 10% the range. And that's true all the way down. So rather than I believe it was 500, what was it? 539.9, it's 647.8. So there is some benefit to being married and filing your taxes jointly. Whereas in 2022, if you were married and you were filing separately, again, you'll see that 10,275 is the 10% of taxable income. And then this actually, then this is something I definitely don't understand. So if you're watching this and you do understand, I would love to hear more about it in the comments down below, but the 37% actually goes down. So I don't, I don't know why you would ever be married and file separately, but there may be some strategic tax advantage that I just don't know about. So how is this changing in 2023? In 2023, you'll notice that the tax owed for 10% of your taxable income went up from $10,275 to $11,000. So now you can earn more money in 2023 and stay under that 10% threshold. You'll notice that this is true across the board because all of these brackets have been pushed up a little bit. My non-educated guess is this is probably due to inflation, but maybe this the tax brackets just change every single year and there's a standard increase every year. That is something I don't know and need to look into. Now in 2023, if you are married filing jointly rather than 20,550, it is 22,000. So again, you see that these taxable income brackets have increased for 2023. So if you wanna dive into this in more detail, this is just a free article on NerdWallet that I will put in the description down below that I found pretty interesting. Next, I used my one free article, I think for the month on the Washington Post. They're so, they're so stingy, but I found a little gem that I thought would be pretty interesting to add to this video. So it says, in 2020, the top 1% of earners in New York, California, and Connecticut paid almost 12% of all federal income taxes, which I could not believe that. 1% One, 1 of three states, so 1% of New York, California, and Connecticut, the top 1% of these three states paid almost 12% of all federal income taxes. I'm definitely not on the 1%, so I'm grateful that someone else is paying that, but I don't, is that right? That seems like a lot for, that seems like a lot. 
but I, that's just me. So uh, I would love to know your comments down below if if you feel like that's a lot or not enough, I'm just curious. I, I'm just doing some research. I don't I don't know. So finally, as promised, probably the most exciting part of this video, in my opinion, is looking at the tax burden by state. And again, I thought California was going to be the highest tax state, maybe Hawaii, but it wasn't. And I, I figured New York would be up there, but this is what I found. So let me show you what we're looking at here. We have the overall tax burden by state. So you have the overall rank number 50, and then the state, the total tax burden. So how they're getting the total tax burden is they're looking at property tax, individual tax, and total sales and excise tax. And they're, they're just putting those together, getting the total tax burden per state. So coming in at number 50, which means it's the state with the least tax burden in the United States of America is Alaska with a total tax burden of 5.06% and the majority of the taxes coming from property tax. Next you have Delaware at 6.12% with the majority coming from individual income tax, then New Hampshire with the majority coming from property tax, Tennessee, Florida. Florida has no state income tax. Uh, Tennessee has almost no state income tax and New Hampshire has very little state income tax. So if you are a remote worker looking for a place to live where you won't be taxed so much, you can look into these states, New Hampshire, Tennessee, Florida, Wyoming, South Dakota. As I'm naming these, it kind of sounds like there's a reason there's no income tax in these states. No offense, no offense, just saying. So coming in kind of in the middle, you're looking at Utah, Virginia, Washington, Colorado, and West Virginia. Washington also has no state income tax, and so does Texas, which Texas, that's that's pretty solid. But you do see that they make up for it in property tax and sales tax. So as we scroll down here, you'll notice that coming in at number 12, this honestly surprised me. I thought I thought California was gonna be number one, but it, just 8.89% total tax burden, 2.79% property tax, 3.05% income tax, and 3.05% sales tax. Now let's take a look at the dreaded top 10. Coming in at number 10, we have Iowa with a total tax burden of 9.15%, then Illinois, Minnesota, Maryland, New Jersey, Connecticut, Vermont, Maine, and Hawaii. Hawaii is coming 12.31% total tax burden. So that leaves only one more state. The state, it's the state where I live, New York, where we have a 12.47% total tax burden, a 4.36% property tax, a 4.72% income tax, and a 3.39% sales tax. And if you live in the beautiful city of New York City, I live in Manhattan, and if you do, you have an additional city tax on top of all of these taxes. So why do I live in New York City? If I hate paying, if I hate paying taxes, which I do, if I were to think about it, I could really only come up with one answer. And it's that when I walk outside of my door, I'm in New York City. There's a price we pay for everything. 